it came as no surprise to me when I kept receiving calls, calling for or asking for uh, Mr. Kofi Annan. And I'm talking about calls from important countries, statesmen and women, presidents, etc. To be our next uh, general secretary. Of course, at that time, there was uh, Mr. Butchers, Butchers Ghali. And uh, he had just served his first term or so. And uh, politically speaking, I didn't think they would be amused. But he was, Butchers, Butchers Ghali was uh, a very frank and blunt person. I think I'll leave it at that and move straight to Kofi Annan. Kofi Annan had the qualities of a very, of a professional diplomat. There was hardly anything offensive about his approaches on issues, no matter how wrong some, some half or some faction may be. You know, he, he, he spoke about issues as if he was serving, you know, and I thought that would go down a lot better with, with powers that be, powers that are, or people, you know, in conflict issue, involved in conflicts. Um, Kofi Annan had worked through the system, the UN outfit, for many years. He was a man, I'll describe him as a true professional diplomat. He had a historical memory about events and challenges that you and, and the world had gone through. He had uh, a good institutional memory too. So who better than him, if I may put it that way? Besides, um, it was difficult to look past him when he's one of the candidates. He's that extraordinary. He's that special. And uh, it was Africa's turn, you know. And he could handle all the languages pretty well. He was a very mild-mannered person. Very respectful, very respectable. Maybe the kind of person that you and needed as a Secretary General. He was a very fair-minded person and uh, as difficult as it was, you know, pushing aside a fellow African diplomat, I could also understand the need for this man with these special qualities. That's his old office, he's been there before, not in that direct, not in the office of a Secretary General but along the various steps, through various conflicts, through various difficulties. They are rare. You don't come across people like that so often, you know. So he was the right person at the right time. In fact, when he came to the end of his term, the world had, had a chance or an opportunity, they would have insisted, let's give him another term, you know. But uh, the others before him did what they could. He did what he could, but so did he. It might interest you to know that here in my country, in Ghana, the suggestion to build and to name a Kofi Annan center after him came from the armed forces under the leadership of General Quena. And I'm grateful to him for that. If others or colleagues of his also suggested it to him that he passed on, all well and good, I'm, I'm grateful to all of them. But it was a fine recognition and I didn't hesitate at all in giving the go ahead for them to build that center. 
coming from the armed forces itself. Yes. Uh, we've lost one of the finest, you know. In, uh, when it comes to a family gathering and you lose a very precious father or mother, a precious person, senior, you know, it can help to strengthen, reunify the family, or it could lead to a breakup of a sort. Uh, the world is going through some pretty difficult times, since the, especially since the collapse of the, of the bipolar world. I have this tendency of quoting uh, Pope John Paul when he described the economic practice in the world as the savagery of capitalism. Standards have fallen so badly over the years since that collapse several years down the line. What's his name? Uh, President Carter even describes his own country, the U.S., as a country that had lost its moral, its moral authority. Yeah. And if that can happen to a country like that, you know, it may be wor worse in several other areas, pockets around the world. They've got a very interesting person as the Secretary General today, highly experienced and uh, forceful person in the person of the former Portuguese uh, president. But uh, nonetheless, issues have grown so complex that you would need a few more of his kind, of Kofi Annan's kind. And this is why it never used to surprise me that some of them would invite him, you know, to take up this assignment or that assignment or this uh, peel, uh, what do you call it? Uh, move into this or that country to see what he can do, as he attempted to do in Myanmar. Yes. People with his kind of negotiating skills. Kofianan comes very well equipped for very complex situations, and you would have needed a few more of his kind. There are not that many, and yet the only one we have passes away. That's a great loss. A heavy loss to all of us. Because you're dealing with complex issues. You're dealing with the power factor, ego factor, etc. And his approach sets, used to set people at ease. You know, so that's uh, what we've lost. A very precious person. A peacemaker, indeed. A peacemaker. You know, and... Um, I can only hope that others with similar spirits, with the same qualities, the same skills, would be utilized, would be invited on board by the UN Secretary General to assist. Mm -hmm. There are people outside the formality, the structure of that institution who can be brought on board to assist, and that is what we must be reaching out for. Mm -hmm. It's like Mandela putting together his team of elders. And I think even there, with the Carters and whatnot, uh, they must have agreed amongst themselves to make Kofi Adam the chairperson. <laughs>